What's going on YouTube, friends, drivers, and internet strangers? Today is Tuesday, February the 11th, 2020, and today we are going to talk about truck driving. Now, chances are, if you found this video, you're probably either considering getting into it or you've uh, talked to a recruiter a little bit and you want to know more information. Well, you're in for a treat because today, me... Michael, I have about a year's worth of truck driving experience, and about two years ago, when I was thinking about getting into this, I, like you, was scouring YouTube and the internet for more information about this new career that I was about to get in, and I wanted to know more. I wanted to know what it was going to be like, the day-to-day, -day, all that. So, I've taken it upon myself to just jot some notes down here, and um, just kind of break it down a little bit little bit by little bit and uh, segment by segment by things I thought that were important that I wish I knew getting into this and that I thought you guys would like to know you know moving forward so without further ado let's get into the video so truck driving is this for you you might be thinking you know I'm not really sure about this I don't really know what's all gonna be entailed I'm not going to sugarcoat it, but I also don't want to scare, you know, any potential drivers away from it, you know. You know, it's it's a lot. It's hard work, and it's it's going to be stressful, but it is very rewarding. That in the monetary sense, you know, and in the pride sense, too. You know, it's a hard job, but it is very rewarding. You are going to be proud of what you do if you do pursue this. But just some things that... I want to make you all aware of, you know, before you may take the dive, you know. Again, I have some notes here handy, so I'm going to be referring to those kind of as I go along here, so just bear with me and uh, just, uh, you know, absorb as much information as possible. That's what this video is really all about, you know, just absorbing all that you can. So, this is going to be geared more towards the regional guys, the over-the-road guys. The guys are going to be out five, six days a week. Um, if you're, look, you're looking at this and, you know, you might be local, well, some of this might be useful to you, but again, this is going to be geared more towards the guys that are going to be spending five, six nights a week out in the road, you know, in the sleeper, you know. Local guys, you guys get to go home every night, or you will be getting to go home every night, so this isn't really for you. Um, so with that being said, you know, over the road regional, what that usually means is generally they're going to keep you within like a 12 to 1500 mile radius of your home, you know, a big diameter of your home. So your home is here, my finger, they're going to keep you in this area. So at the end of the week, you can make it, they can get you and make you back home here. Um, it's usually Sunday night or Monday early morning. And, you know, you're going to get home Saturday afternoon-ish, you know, again, being that five and a half to six days a week. Uh, you know, usually miles wise, you're going to be doing, you know, this, now this is going to vary depending on job and depending on company, but on average, you know, maybe 2,500 to 3,500 miles per week, you know, some more, some maybe less. This is just general information. This isn't pertaining to anyone or any company in particular. So just please bear that in mind. This is just, uh, knowledge for everybody to just kind of get an idea of what you're going to be getting into. So with that being said, my next thought is, are you married? You know, do you got a ring on your finger? Do you have children? Okay, do you have any other responsibilities, you know, at home? Pets, for example, fish, dogs, cats, whatever, that you got to take care of. This might, you know, you're going to have to maybe arrange something or, you know, consider those, obviously. Those are big considerations. Now, if you have help from your spouse or significant other or family, whoever, neighbors are going to be taking care of your pets or your family or whoever while you're away, then that's a separate. So is this really going to be for you? And now, now everybody's case is going to be different. So just please, you know, make the best decision, you know, talk it over with those people. Not Obviously not your pets, but <laughs> talk it over with your spouse, you know, your significant other. These people that are going to be able to, or if they can help you, you know, is this the right decision for you? The money is going to be great, but you're going to be making a lot of sacrifices. Please understand that before you get into that. You're going to be sacrificing a lot. Most importantly, time. Time we cannot get back. Time with your family. Time with your friends. Time with your animals, with your pets. 
you know, it's it's going to be hard. You're going to miss certain holidays. I mean, most truck driving companies recognize most major holidays, but some of the ones that you wish you could be home for, maybe you, you, you might not make it home for. So just please keep that in mind. Um, the big ones they try to get you home for, like Thanksgiving and Christmas, but you might not have as much time home as you might like. So, you you know, and especially if you got to get out and run early the next morning, you know, you might have to, you know, get some sleep, get some shut-eye before you head out. So, hours of service. Earlier, I mentioned your 34-hour reset. Uh, I'm going to kind of break down what that means and your hours of service as a whole right now. So, hours of service. You have 24 hours in a day. Say, between my two hands is 24 hours. Hours of service are the hours that you can serve, the hours that you can work. How it, you know, how it works is, between those 24 hours, your day, you know, your, here's your day, 24 hours. 14 of those 24 hours, okay, you're with me so far, are going to be your on-duty, your working time. That That's your allowed time to work in that 24 hour span you have 14 hours okay and that includes uh your pre and post trip inspections important uh that's going to be your loading and unloading time things your fuel time you know when you're at the truck stop getting fuel that's important that's going to be in that 14 hours now within those 14 hours are 11 hours of drive time now that's the time that you're actually physically in the truck, door closed, rolling down the road, going down the highway, 11 hours of what you are allowed per day to drive. Okay, so you're with me so far. So now you're probably thinking, okay, so I got 24, 14 on duty, 14 working, and within those 14, I got 11 hours to drive. 11 hours is what you can drive, 14 on duty, working, loading, unloading, fuel, etc. cetera, pre, pre and post trip inspections out of your 24 hours in total. Now, 24 hours minus that 14 that you're working leaves you with 10 over here. Now your 10 is going to be what's important as far as, you know, that's your off duty. That's your sleeper birth time. That's the time that you can do stuff when you're at the truck stop, when you're, you're shutting down for the night and you're going to bed. Uh, that, that's going to be your 10 hours there. You have to have 10 hours consecutive off duty or in a sleeper birth to to regain your full clock for the next day so you can go ahead and do it all again. Now, the company that you work for or if you're going to truck driving school, they're going to break this down, you know, obviously better. They're going to break this down so you understand it better. But I just wanted to give you kind of an idea of what you're going to be up against. Uh, now, backtracking a little bit to that 34-hour reset that I mentioned earlier. You have 70 hours per week to work. That's what you are allowed to work. 70 hours per week. When you're off duty, when you're when you're at home, when you go home for the weekend, you need 34 hours consecutively off or in a sleeper berth or off duty to reset that 70 hour clock. So once you start your clock on Monday morning, say, say you start your pre-trip, that 70 hours is ticking. You know, it's ticking, it's tick, 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 ticking away. So by the time, you know, Saturday comes around, you know, you have to to reset that clock again, you can you have to be either off duty or in the sleeper berth for 34 consecutive hours to reset that 70 hour clock. Now these are hours of service. This isn't mandated by some company. This is federal law. This is what the law requires us as drivers to work. You know, just to make sure we're getting rested enough to make sure you know we're operating safely, and so they put these laws in place for the companies. To make sure that their drivers are operating safely. You have to follow it, unfortunately. You know, you don't have paper logs anymore. They did away with those. Older drivers will tell you when you meet them that they did away with the paper logs. And now you have this onboard electronic log device. Um, now, with that being said, uh, kind of switching gears here, no pun intended. Uh, <laughs> next, I want to talk about uh, some apps that can help you along the way. Now, there are loads of apps that can help you along the way. But I wanted to talk about, I got two here that I thought were very helpful and useful and then about just about anybody can get use from. With that being said, the first app is Trucker's Path. It's called Trucker's Path. 
Android or Apple friendly, you know, go on your Google Play Store or, you know, your app spot and try and find it. It's called Trucker's Path, you know, and it's just an app that shows where are the safe havens. And what I mean by that is where are all the truck stops? Where are all the rest areas? Where can we shut down? Where can we take our 30 minute breaks? Where can we, you know, pull over that's truck friendly? It's not just, you know, because you're going to need to do that, obviously, when you're shutting down or when you're taking your breaks and stuff, you're going to need to do that. It's important. Trucker's Path also, I think they have like fuel prices on there, I believe. Don't don't quote me on that. You'd have to check it out. It's been a little while since I've used it, but they also have, um, they have some kind of, there, there's a free and there's a paid version of two, I should say. And um, I think the paid version has like some kind of navigation on there. We're going to touch on navigation a little bit, not at this moment, but Trucker's Path, definitely a must have. You know, because when you're in unfamiliar areas and you're not sure what's around and, you know, and you're running out of time, your clock's running short, you need somewhere to go, check that, you know, either when you're, you're, you're trip planning or, you know, when you, you pull a truck over, obviously, don't do this while you're driving. That's just, <laughs> it's just, it goes without saying, but, you know, check Trucker's Path. It's a very useful tool. I used it regularly. The next app that I wanted to talk about is the cat scale app. Yes, cat scales, like at the truck stops, you know, you know what they're for, or you maybe don't know what they're for. Seasoned drivers would tell you cat scales are basically you pay, you roll on them, and they're just a scale to weigh you out at the truck stop so you're not rolling overweight when you're going past those weigh stations or you're going through those weigh stations to have some peace of mind. Uh, basically what it is is it just tells you where you know the cat scales are at and like when you get to the truck stop and you want to weigh yourself you want to weigh the truck want to weigh the load see how much it is make sure you're not over um if the shipper didn't have a scale for whatever reason there or if you just want to, if you're if you're close to you know that eighty thousand pound limit or whatever you want to be sure you know find a cat scale anyway when you get to the cat scale you don't have to yell through the intercom put down the window and yell through the intercom you could just do it all via the app you know, you can either pay for it, I think, with your uh, with a card or something, or if you have a fuel card, you know, with your company. We'll, we'll touch on those a little bit later if you're not sure what I mean by that. But you can pay for it through the app, and you just weigh yourself, and the results come right back through the app. And then so that way you have a record. It can email it to you, or you can screenshot it, whatever you want. So you have record of how much you weigh in case anything should ever happen to you, knock on wood. Talk about... Okay, so parking up for the night, doing your 10-hour break, right, to get those consecutive work hours back. Say say you look on Trucks' Bath and there's nothing around for whatever reason, or you're not going to make it within the time you're allotted. You know, your, your time is running out, and you're like, shit, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be over hours, and I can't do that. Um, the next best thing I would suggest is don't, don't, don't pull off on just on the shoulder of the interstate on the highway. You know, AC guys do that, but I, I wouldn't recommend that. That's not safe, you know. Somebody could hit you at any time or an accident, God forbid, you know, an accident should happen. And then you're, if you're sitting right there on the shoulder of the highway, you're not supposed to be there for one. And two, you know, something seriously could happen to the truck, the load, or worst case, you, you know, again, goodness forbid. What I recommend is when you're on the interstate and you're looking for somewhere and there's no rest areas, there's no truck stops, or it's, it's late at night, the truck stops are full, whatever. You can do, what I did a lot was the off-ramp, on-ramp trip, you know, get off that off-ramp, I wouldn't recommend parking on the off-ramp, but I would recommend parking on the side of the on-ramp, and the reason I say that is because it's the safest place, all right, think about it, people are flying on the interstate, and, they, and they're coming up on their exit, and they may not know it's there, they're gonna, you know, dive to that off-ramp, you know, they're gonna come by howling, they're gonna come by flying, and, you know, if you're sitting there, it's just, it's just, it's just increase of a chance for you to get hit on the off ramp rather than the on ramp. The on ramp, people are coming from a light, you know, they're coming from a stop sign, you know, whatever, the green arrow, they're turning, they're coming on, they're, they're going slow, they're speeding up, they're not slowing down. And another thing is too, if you're anything like me, I'm kind of a light sleeper. So the noise you know, trucks with the Jake brakes, cars with loud exhausts, you know, coming by you howling, they're going to be a lot louder and a lot faster on off-ramp 
than they would be on the on ramp. Now they're still gonna, you're still going to hear loud exhaust and stuff when you're on the on ramp. Obviously, as cars are accelerating, trucks are accelerating, but it's going to be quieter. Basically, you know, it's going to be a little bit more quiet than it would be if you're sitting next to the off ramp. You know, a lot of companies will tell you this. The company I worked for. One of the companies I work for taught me that, you know, the on-off ramp trick and always park on the on-ramp, you know, if you can't find a safe haven like a rest area, parking area, truck stop, etc. So, yeah, the on-off ramp trip is always, always, always keep that in mind, you know, it's always a safe bet. So, I want to talk a bit, next I want to talk a little bit here about the uh, company-issued fuel cards. This will issue you a fuel card, and it's going to be... It's going to be through a company called EFS. It's, it's commonly called an EFS card, but we call it a fuel card, you know, because we use it for fueling. Um, and that's basically all it is. It's just a company issued card that you swipe at the fuel pump or that you enter into your apps. You know, if, you're, if your company uses, they'll tell you this, obviously, I'm just kind of touching on it. If your company uses TAs, truck stops, you know, you can use it on the TA app there. Or if your company, like the one I, one I used to work for, we use Pilot and Flying J's. Pilot and Flying J are related. They're the same kind of company. So you, we use those true truck stops to fuel. And we had a Pilot Flying J app. We just had the fuel card in the app. And you just, when you get to the truck stop, you pull up to a pump and you go through the app and you punch in all your information. You'll, you'll, they'll touch on this again. You know, obviously, when you're in your orientation for your company, they'll they'll let you know how to do all of this, or the app will let you know how to do all of this. I'm just kind of touching on it briefly again, but um, you use the app, and then another great thing is, I'm getting kind of sidetracked here, but when you, another great thing is, you know, you you if you're using the card through the apps, you you sometimes you earn benefits. You know, you you accumulate points for spending not your money but the company's money, spending their money to put fuel in your truck. You accumulate points via the app, and when you can use these points are are in store kind of things like food and beverages obviously now another great thing that I always use those accumulated points for is showers showers, showers, showers that might have been a thought in your mind like when the hell am I going to shower? How are the showers at the truck stops? Are they dirty? like what whatever showers you can use the points accumulated for showers and guys. It's a blessing. They are free. It doesn't cost you anything. You're spending the company's money and you're accumulating the benefits. You're reaping the rewards for using their money, accumulating points, getting food for free, getting showers for free. The showers at the truck stops, they are fantastic. I like I used like I mentioned before Pilot Flying Jays. They got these great High pressure, now this isn't every single one, but most of the ones that I've been to up and down the East Coast and running out to anywhere, I'm from Pennsylvania, anywhere from, you know, the East Coast to Iowa, you know, just over the Mississippi. I, I ran that general, that area east of the Mississippi, you know, and most of the truck stops that I were at, the Pilot Flying Jays that I was at, you know, they had great high pressure shower heads they're usually hot they usually have soap in there out of some kind of soap dispenser you know if you don't have anything with you but they are fantastic if you haven't showered for two or three days man that is great that is great one thing i want to talk about with the showers is you know what i used when going in and out of the showers at the truck stops um i just have it here offhand so i'm just going to show you I had a bag, just a small backpack, just like this, nothing fancy, a couple pockets, buckles, drawstring top, and I put all my stuff in there. My clothes, you know, they actually, I should tell you this too, they provide you with towels and soap and stuff in the truck stop, but you can bring your own too if you wanted, you know, obviously your, your designated specific toiletries or your toothbrush and toothpaste, obviously you got to supply that, but... They supply you with just the basics in the truck stops. They have towels there, so you don't ever have to worry about that. But you change your clothes, obviously, you're going to want to put in this, you know, carry it in there. It just makes it easier, so you're not just carrying around, you know, in like a shopping bag or whatever. I just always preferred this. This was always more organized. This was easier. I could just throw it on my back, have it in the truck, and just go. All right? Um, another thing, obviously, about the showers at the truck stops, you also want to bring your own toiletries if you have specific shampoos, conditioners, soaps, whatever, your shaving kit, if you want to shave up in there. Obviously, I, I just got this 
this is just like a, you know, just a carry-on, like a travel size carry bag. I just put all my stuff in. It just zips up. And um, I got this at like a Marshall's or like a TJ Maxx type of store. You can get these anywhere at any department store. You know what I mean? It doesn't even have to be a case like this. Just something that you can put all your stuff in, you know, set it down on the bench in the shower or outside the shower, I should say, or on the sink or whatever, and just have all your stuff accessible. Next, obviously, with your change of clothes in this bag, too, are shower shoes. All right, guys, these are important, and I'm going to tell you why. Shower shoes. Just wear these. When you go in the truck stop shower, never, I would, at least I wouldn't recommend it. I wouldn't recommend showering barefoot. <laughs> and, and that being because if you've ever been in jail, I've never been in jail, but for the same kind of reason, for those of you who have been in jail, you know, are going to want to use them in there. You just never know who or what was in the shower before you. Now I'm going to note that between every shower, the company or the truck stop, the company at the truck stop cleans the shower prior to you going in there. You know, everything's wiped down, everything's cleaned up, you know, it's all it's all ready for you to go. Again, all the towel, fresh towels are put in there. So you always just want to wear shower shoes. I recommend getting these. Again, you can get these at the department store. I think I got these for like six or seven bucks or something. Um, they're just rubber. They got holes in the bottom of them, you know, just so water can get through. But shower shoes, guys, super important. I recommend these. Go get yourself a pair if you decide to do this. More essentials that I think drivers should have. Now, these are going to be case specific, you know, whatever you feel like you need or whatever you guys need to do your jobs specifically, but these are just kind of standards, kind of generally what drivers should have out there. Obviously, the first and foremost, most important are going to be, I think a lot of companies are even going to make you have these before you even get to orientation. It's going to be one of the things on your checklist. Um, are either going to be some kind of steel toe boots or non-slip shoes or work boots or something, you know, something along those lines. Uh, I had steel toes, um, I don't have them offhand, but I do have these other ones that I have in the truck with me. They're just the newer Columbias. These aren't steel toe or anything, but they're non-slip. They're great. They're good for being out, you know, working on if you if you guys do flatbed. I did flatbed for a little bit. You know, if you guys are working on the flatbed, so you're not out there. You can do this, but I wouldn't recommend it. Don't be out there in your sneakers. Don't be out there in your Jordans. Don't be out there in your Nikes. Don't be out there in your Adidas. Uh those are way too nice of shoes to be in this kind of work. You guys are going to be out there. You're going to be in the dirty. You're going to be in the mud. You're going to be in the elements. You're going to be in the rain. Don't wear your nice shoes out there. Jordans are so expensive. You know, don't don't be wearing them out there. It's not it's not a fashion show out there. You guys are going to be working. You're going to be dirty. You're going to be going days without showering. It's just don't don't bring them out there. Now, if you want to bring a comfortable pair of shoes to drive in, that's one thing. You know, because I, I did not like driving around in steel toes. I didn't like that. It was uncomfortable. It's way more comfortable to drive in a nice, breathable pair of sneakers. That I can understand. But don't be out outside the truck working, doing your dropping hooks or your, your load securement or, or doing anything with that. You know, don't be out there in your sneakers. Man, you're going to dirty them up. It's going to be a waste. And you're going to be pissed off at yourself. Ask me how I know. List of important essentials that I feel like all drivers should have is this here now mine's old and dirty and it's seen the road it's got war stories to tell but this is a Rand mcnally motor carriers atlas this is a truck specific atlas it's kind of hard to tell because mine's all beat up it's gotten wet it's gotten it's it's gotten through the war it's got stories to tell but this is truck specific you guys Make sure you get the latest edition. When I bought this, it was 2018. Guys, make sure you get the latest edition for the most updated and current roadmaps for trucks. You have to get the ones for trucks. They're going to tell you that when you sign up for orientation, that's going to be on your checklist. It's very important to have. I cannot stress that enough. When you're doing things like trip planning or you're in a spot where you're like, fuck, um, I, I can't get out of here. How the hell am I going to get out of here? I have no idea where I am. Don't use your Apple Maps. Don't use your Google Maps because they're not designated for trucks. Very important. Use your Ram McNally roadmaps. And if you have a trucker's GPS, great. Use that too. But I always recommend because that stuff can break. You know, if the truck breaks down and you have no electricity and 
your Ram McNally doesn't work unless the truck's on or whatever, your your GPS, I should say, it doesn't work, then then what? Right? You know, it's always good to have one of these, and I think it's mandatory that most companies make you get one of these. I think it's like I got mine off Amazon. Uh, this is just a paperback one. It was like I think it was like thirty or thirty five bucks or something, and I and it got to my house in two days. Whatever, no big deal. They also have upgraded ones. I probably should have got the upgraded one, and what I mean by that is the pages. It's a spiral bound, almost like a notebook, and the pages are all laminated, so you can spill stuff on it. I didn't want to spend the extra money. I, I don't I don't know how much exactly those are. You have to check for like the twenty twenty editions. But like I said, when I bought this, this was about thirty five bucks. Um, it's great, a must-have, your Bible, live by it, know it, know how to use it, uh, they'll probably touch in it in your orientation, or you can just pick it up and browse through it. It's pretty self-explanatory, but it's without saying, get yourself one of these, you might, <laughs> it might save you some time, you know. Next, on essentials and must-haves, obviously, you know, you want to be out there, you want to be safe when you're out there. In your steel toes and you're doing loads of caravan or you're dropping a trailer and you know a lot of times you're going to be working in the night or a lot of times you go in the different uh shippers and consignees that you're gonna they're gonna make you have this kind of stuff out here the safety equipment i got this here this is a yellow vest it's reflective that's the word i'm looking for it's reflective you got the reflective strips on it so guys can see at night when lights come on you that you light up a little bit you make it easier to see I got this. This is a 3M brand. Can you see that? 3M brand. Get yourself one of these. I got this at Lowe's. A lot of companies will provide you with one, but I don't really like those. They're very cheap, and they're like that, like that fish netty material. They're not anything really like these. This is a this is a nice heavy duty one. It's adjustable. It's got a pocket on it. I think it's got a pocket on the inside, so you can put all your stuff in there. If you got pens or your safety glasses or whatever, you can put it in here. Um, it's important to have one of these. I always draped it over my passenger side seat. You'll see a lot of guys doing that, just so it's always handy when you get to the shipper or consignee. Uh, they, a lot of times, like I said, they require you to have these, especially if you're doing flatbed like I did. They always made you have a yellow vest. You know, get yourself one. I got this one at Lowe's. I think it was like 10 bucks. Spend the money. You guys are going to be making like 50, 60 K a year anyway, getting into this. And that's just for entry level drivers, but we might talk about that a little bit later too. Get yourself a vest. Get yourself a reflective one. Now, next, along, you know, keeping in the uh, the safety stuff in mind here, the next is going to be a hard hat. Now, a lot of companies will probably provide you with this. You don't have to go out and buy this uh, if you don't want. A lot of companies will provide you with one. The company I worked for provided me with this one, and I kept it. And, again, along with the safety vests, you know, a lot of consignees, a lot of shippers will make you have a hard hat getting in certain places you know if you want to load or unload or if you're doing your own securement if you're doing flatbed they make you have one of these safety helmets but you know they just it, just get one you know always have it the company provides you with one it's free always have it always have it handy and ready to go i would like to talk about and another a very important essential gloves gloves are very important Gloves you you would use every single day when you're out on the road, when you're doing your stuff, when you're out there, when you're doing your load securement, when you're doing your drop and hook on your trailers, if you do dry van, you're gonna be using gloves. You don't want to. I mean, you can use your hands, but I don't. I don't know. It's all greasy and it's dirty and it's rusty and it's cold. And I just always wore gloves. Now, these are the type of gloves that I always wore. They're like more form fitting and they got like this coating on the outside. They're mechanics gloves. They look like that. See the mechanics, and they're they're warm. They're they're not really warm, but they're they're warmer than like those just those cheap thin gloves that you guys might have from when you were kids or whatever. These gloves have, a, like I said, they have a, a coating, like a rubberized coating on the hands there, so they they'll allow water to get through and stuff. You know, a lot of guys wear those kind of looser, heavy duty gloves that you'll see. They're a little bit cheaper, but when they get wet, they get wet, and they're all soggy. I didn't really like that. I like these form-fitting gloves more, but it doesn't matter what you like. This is just what I liked. This is what I preferred. You can go to Harbor Freight. You can go to, you know, Tractor Supply or a store like that. Just get yourself some gloves. Go get yourself some gloves, man. It's really important. Keep your hands clean. Keep your hands safe. You know, 
always, 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 you know, especially if you're flatbed, you're throwing chains. The chains can be cold and wet and rusty and whatever, and you don't want to get your hands on that, especially if you got cuts or whatever. It's just bad news all over the place. Always get yourself some gloves when you're uh, when you're doing all that. It just it just really helps a lot. Another thing, you know, along with that important essentials that I would recommend is obviously when you're going to be out there, like I said, again, you're going to be out in there in the elements. You're going to be out there. You're going to be doing your load securing. You're going to be hooking and dropping and doing all this stuff with trailers. You're going to be out of the truck all the time. You'll see. But you always got to have warm, obviously, jackets handy, either a couple sweatshirts. You know, I always just had a couple pullovers and then like a car hard or like a heavier coat that I could wear when it was like really cold out. Um, rain gear, also important. Make sure you got like a poncho or some kind of rain jacket, you know, because sweatshirts are great and stuff or the heavier coats are great, but they're not really waterproof, you know, especially when it's in like the springtime, it's a little bit warmer, it's a little bit muggy or a little bit, you know, it's just, you don't want to be out there in a soggy sweatshirt, especially if you're, if you're throwing chains or if you're hooking bungees, if you're doing flatbed or if you're, you're dropping a trailer, if you're doing drive-in or if you're, you know, one of those dry bulk guys when you got to, you know, monitor all your pressures and stuff and doing your hoses and stuff. Be out there and make sure you got proper gear. You know what I mean? I learned this the hard way. You don't have to, 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 to abide by what I'm saying, but I would recommend it. Guys, it's just, it's really important. That makes, it just makes your job easier. It makes you more efficient. It makes, because it's going to make you quicker when you're out there. Get it, get it done. You get it done quickly and efficiently. You're not worrying about, you know, you're, you're, you're being all soaking wet in your jeans or whatever. If you got a poncho. Um, what I always used, this isn't necessary, but I thought it was always very necessary to keep myself organized. Now, a lot of guys do this differently, but this was the cheapest route. Just go get yourself a clipboard. I'm going to tell you why. When you're delivering loads, you're going to be have what's called bills of lading. That just, that's just paperwork on the freight that you're hauling. You know, it tells you the weight, tells you where it's going, tells you where it came from, and it just tells you, it tells you everything. It's, it's required to have when you're pulling freight, going down the road, you have to have a bill of lading, okay? And to keep track of that bill of lading, you're not just going to, people, sometimes they just drop it on their passenger seat, whatever. I always put it in this clipboard, you know, you have it, you put it in this clipboard, boom, it's done. Then I would throw that on my passenger seat, all right? It just keeps it, everything handy, you know. If you always put it in this clipboard, you know, you always know where your paperwork is. And it's never going to fly out the window if you have the windows down on a warmer day or whatever. You know what I mean? Just always have it in this clipboard. That way, when you get there, you just reach over to your passenger seat, grab your clipboard, it's got your paperwork, out the door you go. It's all about efficiency out here, guys. To save you time, to make you more money, it's always about time shaving. And you'll learn that. You'll learn that. So this is just a little simple trick that I did. You know, always have a clipboard, you know, so that you can always keep track of your paperwork as needed. Another thing. Another essential must-have. Sunglasses. Sunglasses are super important. Now, you're going to be driving a lot. You're going to be driving in those 11 hours that I was talking about before. Remember when I was telling you about the hours of service and the 24 hours and the 14 and the 11? 11 of those hours are going to be driving. Chances are there's going to be times where it's going to be super sunny and you're going to be driving either into the east in the morning or into the west at night. You know, the sun's going to be rising, the sun's going to be setting. You know, you're going to be driving right into it. It's a pain in the ass. It sucks. I know. Get yourself a good pair of sunglasses. I recommend it. Your eyes are so essential for this job. It's important to keep them as healthy as possible. Get yourself a good pair of sunglasses. Get yourself a good pair, like a, a UV, like a UV protectant if you can, you know, integrate it into the lenses or whatever. But super important, super important sunglasses. Goes without saying. Next, what I want to talk about is another essential, and that's flashlights. Remember before when I was talking about how you're going to be having to work out at night? You're going to have to be working in the dark in certain places. and It's always good to have a good flashlight. I had a flashlight right in the door at the bottom of my driver's side door. So when I'm doing my pre-trips, when I'm doing my post-trip inspections, when I'm doing my load securement, when I'm dropping and hooking trailers, I can see, you know, I can make sure my kingpin is, you know, is hooked you know, in my fifth wheel, and I can always check all the tires, I can check, you know, to make sure nothing's damaged, I can look up underneath, and I can look under, you know, what, it's just important to have working at night, make sure you get yourself a good flashlight, flashlight's really, really important, 
get yourself a good flashlight. It'll save you time later, you know, so you're not, you know, just out there with your phone or whatever. Just get yourself a good flashlight. Now, while I'm on the thought of uh, pre-trips and post-trip inspections, pre-trip inspections are super important. If you don't know what I'm talking about, basically what a pre-trip inspection is, is you, just, you just check over everything in the truck, you know, prior to starting your day. You know, you know, you got to check everything to make sure everything's mechanically all right. You know, everything's physically all right. Everything's ready to go. And what the, what I mean by that is you're going to be checking. You do this every day. You're going to be checking your tires. You're going to be checking your suspension components. You're going to be checking your brakes, your service brakes, your air brakes. You're going to be checking all that. You're going to be checking uh, the lights, the headlights, the taillights, the, the cab lights, you know, your high and low beams. You're going to be checking, you know, the grill the radiator, you're going to be checking the coolant, you know, make sure your coolant levels are right, you're going to be making sure your fans are working all right, you're going to be checking your oil levels, oil level is important, you know, you're going to be checking that all the time, you're going to be checking when you're dropping and hooking trailers, you're going to be checking, you know, make sure the trailer tires are right, make sure you're on the flat spots on it, you're going to be checking your trailer lights, all these things you got to check when you do your pre and post trip inspections, I recommend doing them every day, and I'm going to tell you why. If you don't know what a pre-trip inspection is and you're kind of alarmed by everything that I'm saying, don't worry about it. When you get to orientation, if you do decide, if you do decide to pursue being a truck driver, they're going to break it all down for you. They're going to show you a system. They're going to show you what every, everything is on a truck. They're going to show you all those things. If you don't know already, you know what all these things are: your service brakes, your suspension components, you know all your engine hoses, all your electrical wiring, your alternator, your belts, you know all your liquids, your coolant, your your oil, all that, your windshield wipers, everything, you know, inside and out in the truck. They're probably gonna show you if it's a decent company. They're gonna show you how to do a, a proper pre-trip inspection. You know, it's really important. I think it's part of getting your CDL. <clears throat> it's on the test or whatever, you know. If you have no idea what I'm talking about, don't be alarmed. Like I said, just they're going to teach you about all of that. But it's important to do all of that. It's important to do pre-trip inspections. Well, it's actually part of the law. You know, you have to do it. You know, you have to, or you at least have to show the time that you do a pre-trip inspection. But because it prevents things that make your day bad, things that slow you down, breakdowns, flat tires, you know, things like that, things like that, they're going to stop you. When you're running low on time and you got to drop this delivery today or else you're going to be in trouble, you know, and if you get a flat tire, it's, I mean, or if you, if your truck breaks down, the first thing they're going to ask you probably, did you do your pre-trip? You know, did you see it? When did this happen? Blah, 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 blah. You know, it's just really important. If you can catch these things, like if you're, if you got a nail in your tire, and you didn't recognize it earlier when you're doing your post trip inspection with the when you're the when you're done at the end of the day when you just do your quick walk around and do your post trip inspection and you see there's a nail in your tire you take that 10 hours you now have the a lot of 10 hour time to call your company get somebody out there to switch the tire out that way the next day you're ready to roll that way the next day you don't go out and then your tires flat when your clock's already started and now you got to call somebody and now that's going to eat up your time you know so it's really really important to do pre and post trip inspection guys i can't stress that enough make sure you do them thoroughly make sure you check everything and, and again, if, if DOT, you know, the police, the state police pull you over, somebody pulls you over, they yank you, you got a taillight out, you got a headlight out, you know, you're going to get fined for that. And the company's not going to pay for it yet. That's on you. You know, that's important too. That's on you because did you do your pre-trip inspection? Did you know you had a headlight out? You know, it's really important. Make sure you guys get out and do that. Make sure when they go over it, you know, that part of the curriculum when you're in orientation, make sure you really understand what they're talking about. Just absorb all that information. Guys, this isn't hard. Just, you do it every day. You go out and you check everything to make sure everything's all right. Make sure you're ready to roll. Make sure you're ready to roll safely in accordance with federal law. You know what I mean? Really, really important. Everything I'm talking about is important to an extent, but this is also really important too, especially when you're newer, when you're a rookie driver and you're not really sure, you know, you do the backing, 
we're going to be talking about bagging here. You do the bagging when you're in orientation and you pass the test and stuff. But once you're really out there by yourself, you're not with your driver trainer anymore. You know, you're not, you don't really have, you know, you, this is on you now. Like you got it. This is your show now. You're in your truck. It's got your name on it. It's got your number. Like this is, this is all you now. Like you got to bag that truck in. A lot of times they're going to be in tight spots. A lot of times they're going to be in busy, busy truck stops. You know, a lot of times it's going to be at night when you can't really see. Um, <laughs> it's so simple, but it's so critically important. This is one of the more critically important things that, you know, if any, that you guys, you guys really absorb and you guys really practice when you get out there by yourselves, you know, if you decide to do this. And it's got an acronym, and it's called GOAL. G-O-A-L. And what that stands for is get out and look. Get out and look. Super, super important. When you're doing backing maneuvers, get out and look. You know, when you start it, get out and look. When you when you back up a little bit farther, get out and look. When you gotta, you know, get back underneath it, get out and look. Make sure, do walk around your truck. Make sure you're still straight. Make sure you're not near anybody or anything, any debris or anything that's gonna damage the truck. Anything that's going to damage the tires, anything that's going to damage somebody else, buildings, whatever, curbs, poles, whatever. Get out and look. Super important, you know. And if if you're the type of guy where you, you, you or, or gal that you're too proud to get out and look, you think, you think oh, no, I got this. Guys, I, I did this for a year, and I got out and looked all the time. Veteran drivers will get out and look. They will, they will do that. They will practice it. It's a good thing to practice. And there's going to be times when you got out and look and you'd be like, damn, I didn't even see that in the mirror. I didn't realize I was that close. I was realized I was that close to that building. Like, I got to pull forward. I got to straighten out. And I got to do that again. It's just an insurance policy. That's not an insurance policy. It's going to save you. It's going to save your truck. It's going to save you time. It's going to keep your record good. It's really important, guys. Get out and look. They have stickers on your mirrors, on both of your mirrors, driver and passenger side, for a reason. Get out and look. The thing out there when you're out there driving, you're out there in truck stops, you're out there in parking lots, you're out there at shippers and consignees, you're out there, you know, on the interstates. Gotta have patience, guys. Patience is a virtue, is what somebody, you know, once told me. Patience is a virtue. You gotta have it. You know, there's gonna be times you're gonna be waiting in line. There's going to be times you're going to be waiting to get out. There's going to be times you're, you know, you're waiting at the, the fuel island at the truck stop to get fuel. There's going to be a line. you got to have patience, guys. You know, it's really important. It's, it's, really, it's really a safety thing, too, when you think about it. You know, you just got to have patience. It's really important. There's going to be times when you get in, into the truck stop. You're going to have to, it's around dinner time, and you want to take a shower. There's going to be a wait on the showers, even though they usually have a bunch of them. There's, there might be a wait on the showers. So you're going to have to wait. You know, use your time wisely and effectively. You know, it's going to be guys, you know, if you're if you're a more experienced driver, there's going to be rookies, you know, that are going to be trying to park. <laughs> and, and they're getting out and they're looking or something, you know. And it's going to take just half patience, guys. Be a waiting game a lot of the times, unfortunately, but... You'll you'll learn that when you get to shippers and you get and you and you're waiting to be unloaded or you're waiting to be loaded. You're gonna have to wait a lot and it sucks. I know. You just just you have to have patience. It's really important. And don't get in a race. This is important too. Go, don't get in a race. All right, guys. If you if you got a load on, chances are you're gonna be rolling right around eighty thousand pounds. It's gonna take a long time to slow down eighty thousand pounds. So don't be racing cars. Don't be you know, muscling cars and stuff and getting them out of the way and, you know, switching lanes a lot and doing all that, you know, it's, it's, it's not a race out there. You got to, this is a job where you got to be really, really safe, you know? And what I mean by that is you don't want to have any accidents. You really don't want to have any accidents. <laughs> it's not a good thing. It's, it's really important to just not be in a race. You got to be patient. A lot of trucks, a lot of times trucks are even governed, you know, under 70 mile an hour, under 65 miles an hour sometimes too for a lot of the, the rookie, the, the starter companies, they're going to be, their trucks are going to be slow. You know, don't get in a race with people, just, just kind of stay in your lane figuratively and, and, you know, literally too, you know, staying in the lane is important too, because you're not, you're not hindering, you're not slowing up traffic, you're not. 
you know, other drivers too. They're gonna get out. They're gonna holler on you at the CB if you got CBs in your trucks, guys. They're gonna they're gonna tell you get out of the way. You know, you just don't want to be hindering people, slowing down people. You know, like traffic. You know, when people are getting on, the people are on an on an on ramp. You know, get over one lane. Let that let that car, let that truck get on, and then get back behind them. You know what I mean? You guys are gonna be moving slow. It takes us a lot of time to slow down if we gotta jump on the brakes. It takes us a lot of time to stop or slow down. You know, if if that needs to be. So don't get in a race. Slow and steady wins the race. Next, uh, changing gears here again. Uh, no pun intended, but changing gears here again. I want to talk about kind of like your food and what you're gonna be eating a lot. Um, <laughs> Excuse the dog right next to me chewing his ball, but food, you know, what I brought with me, what I had, you know, it's important. You might be questioning, you know, like what, like what, the, what should I bring? Like, what should I have along? Like, what should I have in the truck? Like all these things. Um, first and foremost, case of water, case of water, very important for a couple of different reasons. Okay. Case of water one, obviously best thing for you to drink. It's, it's pretty cheap. You get like a 24 pack for like three or $4 at the grocery store. Always have that on hand, you know, if you're ever stranded, you know, like in a snowstorm or something and you're stuck at the truck stop for a long time or you're stuck on the side of the road sometime or you're stuck somewhere sometime, you always have water to drink. It's really important to have. Always have water, guys. <laughs> I mean, it goes without saying, but it's really important to always have water, right? And another great thing about water, too, is like if you're, say you're making, I did these a lot when I was in my truck, when you're making like a, uh, like a, a microwavable instant ramen bowl. Right, you know what I mean. You pour, you you rip the lid off. You put the you put stuff in. You can then use a bottle of water to then fill <laughs> your cup of soup. So you can microwave it, and then and then there you go. It's kind of it's kind of dual purpose kind of thing. You know, it's really important. Um, water, it's cheap, it's healthy. You know, I kind of avoid. You know, as, as crazy as it might seem, you know, I I tried to avoid energy drinks, and I really tried to avoid soda too. Now, you might hear that and you might be like, nah, like I love soda or nah, you know, whatever. I didn't really like soda that much to begin with, so I tried to avoid it, you know. Daily, I didn't really have soda daily all the time or at all, really. But same with energy drinks, too. If you got a fridge in your truck and you're doing a long haul, it's not a bad idea to keep an energy drink handy, you know, for that last little leg of the trip to, to give yourself that, that final perk up to get you through the home stretch of that trip, you know. Um... Because energy drinks do have a lot of sugar in them and stuff, so they're going to make you crash. You know, if you drink it and then you're, you're perked up, and then after a while you're going to be, you know, you're going to be crashing back down to earth again. You know what I mean? You're going to be kind of getting sleepy, and it's going to be kind of where you were at to begin with. But, yeah, water. Water is important. Always keep that on hand. You know, if you don't really like water, you like something with flavor, too. You know, I recommend, like, juices, uh, healthy-esque version of juices. Juices are deceiving because they can be perceived as healthy, but they're not really that healthy. They're still loaded like with sugar like soda is. You know, you'd be really surprised. Read the nutrition facts label, guys. It's it's important, you know. Juices, I tried diet. I did like cranberry. I did all kinds of stuff, but that's just me. Anyway, I did, I did these other little things, these little breakfast shakes. They're, they're made by a company called Ensure, E-N-S-U-R-E, and they're just called Breakfast Essentials. They come in like a six-pack or like a case, and they're just like little drinks. They're like chocolate-flavored. I think you can get them a couple different flavors if you want, but I got mine in chocolate. And um, you just they're just like little breakfast essential drinks. They have all kinds of vitamins and minerals in them and calcium and protein and stuff in them. And it's really good when you when you don't have a lot of time to spare for breakfast and you just need to, you know, kind of get something to get you going to get and when you gotta jump right in the seat and start going down the road again. You can just drink that as you're going along, really easy. Comes with a cap. Uh, now as far as things to actually physically eat, okay. I did rice. I did like okay, like rice, what I mean by that is like like microwavable packets or little cups of rice. You can get them like an individual serving cups. You get them at the grocery store that you can pop them into the microwave for like a minute or so, whatever. You got a nice little hot meal ready to go right out the bag. I did Uncle Ben's a lot. They were like minute, minute, ride, minute rice sides or something. I forget what they were called. I did a lot of those. Um, I did uh, tuna. Tuna is a really great source of protein. It's a great snack. You don't have to keep it refrigerated or anything. You know, tuna's great. I did that. Like in those little, they just like... You see people use them on salads and stuff sometimes, or they just have like the little packets and they just, you know, they dress their salad with it or whatever. 
I just ate it right out of the package. Tuna flavored. I got like hot chili, spicy sweet chili, salt and pepper, lemon pepper. They got all kinds, guys. They got tons, you know, whatever. This is just what I had. These are just suggestions if you're not sure what to, you know, get at the grocery store. Especially if you don't have, like, a lot of, some trucks might not have, or your company might not provide a refrigerator or whatever. Or if you don't have the money for an electric cooler, say, for example, you don't have money for an electric cooler, you know, these are just things that you can just have. You don't have to refrigerate. They're not really perishable. You know, you can just... Rip open the tab, just eat it. Doesn't have to be anything crazy. You can just throw it in the cabinet and truck. Great. Off you go. Um, like I said, I did ramen bowls. And another little trick another little trick, I know I was kinda of preaching about health earlier, but another little trick I did with ramen bowls, if you're anything like me guys, I like to have snack foods in the trucks too. I had like almonds. Almonds were big too. They're they were heart healthy, but I also did like less healthy options. Like I did Doritos, I did chips, pretzels, I like pretzels a lot too. Um and things like that. And most specifically on Doritos, when you're eating those ramen bowls I was talking about earlier, guys, if you like hot and spicy kind of like I do, I like to take a handful and kind of just crush them up in my hands and then just dress them in your in your ramen bowl it just has a little extra flavor a little extra you know something going on there and it was oh, so good but anyway getting back on track here i did a lot of fruits i did like bananas bananas are easy you just take a bushel at the grocery store they're good for like a week or two you know peel them throw the peel out off you go i did canned fruits too canned fruits are easy like i did i did a lot of peach or peaches and i did pears i like pears a lot um just open the can up, eat it right out of the can. Super easy. Also, like the the individual um, little bowls and stuff, like they, the 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 fruit bowls that they would have, like it comes in the light syrup or the light juice or whatever. You can get a lot of those, the mixed fruit salads or whatever your 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 fruit of choice may be. I did a lot of those. That doesn't even have to be fruits too, but like vegetables and stuff too if you're heating it up with your rice or whatever or your proteins if you got fish or if you got chicken or whatever you can do that this is not these are just to give you guys ideas on what to expect or what you can do you know when you're out there on the road so you're not eating at the truck stop all the time that's another thing too don't eat at the truck stop all the time if you can avoid it that's expensive and it's really unhealthy too guys you'll see you know there's a lot of nights you're not going to be you know, rolling by a truck stop or rolling to a truck stop where there's going to be full and there's like a man of room for you there. So, you know, you can't count on eating at the truck stop every single night, you know, just an FYI. I'm just telling you from my personal experience, you're not going to be able to do that all the time. It's just how it is. So, um, another thing I like to do too while I was out there on the road, soups. Soups are great um, and not traditionally like in the cans, but I did like the little microwave safe bowls that they would come in where you just you know you rip off the tab lid and then they just put them right in the microwave you know if you have a microwave if you got an inverter in your truck with outlets you have a microwave you just put them right in there soups soups are great stews chilies all that all good stuff another thing too when you're when you're going down the road and you and you're hungry but you don't have time you're trying to make an appointment you're trying to get somewhere trying to get something done where you don't have time to actually stop, pull over, and make yourself something to eat. Um, I did a lot of that, like just handhelds, like right out of the bag. You can kind of just eat as you're going down the road. Um, another thing too, pro trick tip here. All right, guys, listen to me. This is a pro giving you advice. When you're feeling tired, when it's late at night and you're drowsy and you got and you're like falling asleep, and you, everybody knows their own limit, but they can cross. Here's something that always helped me. You can either get Something crunchy, something hard, something crunchy, like those sourdough pretzel bites. You can either, you know, break them up and just eat those, even if you're not really that hungry. The 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 chewing and the crunching, you know, there's something about it that just kind of wakes you up a little bit. And you'll notice when you're eating those as you're going down the road, when you're you're not gonna be feeling as tired anymore. You're gonna be kind of more focused. You're gonna be kind of, you know, you're eating. You're like, okay, I'm kind of pepped up a little bit. Whatever. I don't really know how it works. But I'm just saying, if you get tired when you're going down the road, grab something crunchy, something hard, like sourdough pretzels. I did almonds. You can do chips, you know, Dorito, you know, whatever. Whatever you pick your poison, you know what I mean? Just something kind of crunchy, something to kind of stimulate your brain a little bit, you know, get your mind away from being tired. And, you know, when you're going down the road, always have something handy to access when you're going down, like some kind of small basket or container or something that can hold all your snacks, all your drinks, you know, 
that aren't refrigerated or whatever. Like if you just have a couple of bottles of water, so you could just quick grab it as you're going down the road. Just something small, maybe like a Tupperware or some kind of basket or something. I don't know, whatever. You can go find something at the dollar store, Walmart, cheap, whatever. Doesn't matter. Just something that could hold all your food together so it's not just all over your floor or whatever. Or if you have an electric cooler, if you got it like that, you can just plop open your electric cooler, grab something out of that, and just eat it as you're going down the road, obviously. You know, safely, that is. You know, whatever the case may be. And kind of staying on that, you know, health-minded discussion we were kind of having a little bit earlier. Um, stretching is really important, too. I know, again, I'm kind of all over the place. I'm just kind of sporadic and everywhere. But I'm just kind of reading off my notes here that I got written down. And um, being healthy is important while you're out there, you know. So... What I recommend is when you're doing your pre-trips and your post-trips inspections or you're taking your 30-minute break, do go out and stretch it a little bit. You know what I mean? You'll notice that you're constantly, like when you're in the chair and you're driving, you're always like, you're going to be like wanting to crack your back or something or like, you know, cracking your neck or your shoulder blades or whatever, your knuckles, anything like that. It's really important to get out because you're becoming kind of stationary for hours at a time. So when you get a chance to stop and pull over, when you get over for, like I said, your 30-minute break, or excuse me, when you get ready to shut down for the night, stretch. Stretching is very important. Make sure you guys get out and do that. It's important. You feel better. You know, if you got a flatbed, go out and do some pull-ups on the side of flatbed if you can. You know, just something to get your body you know, get the blood circulating a little bit because when you're sitting down for a long period of time, your your blood circulation slows down, especially in your legs, guys. We're going to be sitting for long periods of time for hours on end. So it's really important, you know, to make sure you're getting that blood circulating, you know, get out and stretch, get out, walk around the truck a couple times, do some pull-ups, do some push-ups, whatever. Stretch. Stretching is important. Do it. Do it. I want to talk about too is, uh, I, I mentioned a couple times being efficient. Being efficient is important because being efficient means you're going to make more money. You're going to get more loads delivered. You're going to pick up more loads. You're going to get paid more. You're going to make more money. And that's really why we're all in this, right? Make money. We want to make more money. We want to make the most money that we can. Don't stop at every single truck stop. You know, you're going to have to make do with what you got. Just keep the left door closed, somebody told me. You know, keep that left door, keep that driver's side door closed. Keep the wheels turning. Because if the wheels aren't turning, you're not earning. And, that, you know, it's just a little saying that truck drivers have. If the wheels aren't turning, you're not earning. And it's so true. Keep the left door closed, guys. Don't stop all the time. Don't stop at every single truck stop. Try to trip plan and, and coordinate your meals and your time accordingly. You know, when you got to take your 30-minute break, that's when you pull into the truck stop and you get fuel if you need fuel. Or if you're pulling into a truck stop at night, fuel up before you park. That way you're good for the next two days or so. You know what I mean? So you don't have to stop in the middle of the day because that's eating up your time. That's eating up miles and that's eating up potentially money that you could be earning. You know, that extra load that you might get out that week, you know, making more money. It's important. Don't stop all the time. Please just, you, you might learn this as you go along. And when you get out with your driver trainers, they're going to elaborate on this more. But it's important. Wheels aren't turning. You're not earning. Sleep. Sleep is so important. It's so important to keep, I mean, yourself sane, your mind sane, obviously. But your eyes, your focus, you got you to gotta stay well rested because... You know, when you're driving around all groggy and stuff, and there's a lot of times you're going to be on, like, on your schedules are going to be goofy, you know. They're going to be weird. You're going to be sleeping at different times. You're going to be shutting down, might shut down a couple of different times during the week, you know, depending on what appointment times that your dispatch gave you. You know, it's it's crazy, but just sleep as, as much as you can when you can, you know, to keep yourself sane, keep your body sharp. Keep your mind sharp. Keep your eyes ready and alert and keep your judgment up, you know, and everything. It's just, just sleep. But 
that's gonna about do it from this video guys um if this was helpful at all like if you grab something from this you grasped a lot of the things i was saying uh just hit the like button too um i really would appreciate it and if you if I'm, I'm sure there's lots of stuff that i probably missed out that you might think is important that other drivers might think is important drop it down in the comments below um and so we can, you know, we can talk about it. We can touch on it maybe on the next one or something. But let me know that it helped you in the comments below. You know, like the video if this was helpful, if this was great, if you thought it was good information. And just let me know if there's anything else that I, I probably maybe skipped over. Or, I mean, I'm sure there probably is, you know. Again, this was just a general kind of overview of all this stuff. And just it was it was all over the place. But I wanted to make sure that I touched on the important things and that I expressed the important things to you guys. So... Anyway, see you guys on down the road on the next one.